Steve, pass that syrup over here. Let me try it. Sure, Carl. Woo! That's good syrup. Woo! Where'd you get that syrup? I made it last Saturday. Shut up. You made it? Come on, tell the truth. Yeah, me and a bunch of work campers. How did you make this delicious syrup? <laughs> well, that is a long story. <laughs> First off, you do realize that Jill and I are work campers here at the Panhandle Pioneer Settlement, right? Remember that time I, you, you, you caught me not working? I, I was laying over there about in flowers and you caught me. <laughs> yes, Carl, I remember. Now, let's get back to the story. Now, Jill and I have been work camping here for about nine weeks now. And we're learning our duties with each and every passing event. Two weeks ago, we had our first Pioneer Day. And that was awesome. It was a really, really good experience. And I think we did pretty good. And last week was our first syrup making day. And to do so, we needed ingredients. Carl, do you have any idea what ingredients we needed? No. Please tell me, Farmer Steve. Sugar cane. That's all we needed. <laughs> That's it? Sugar cane? Ha! <laughs> really? <laughs> well, <laughs> that is all the ingredients that it takes. However, it's not an easy process. We worked all week in the sugar cane fields using Pioneer Period tools. Stripping the sugar cane, topping the sugar cane, and finally we were cutting it down. To strip the sugar cane, you put your tool on the sugar cane stalk and you pull down on it super hard, all the way to the ground, and you strip off all the leaves. Every stalk, every row, and this particular syrup making operation, we used two and a half rows. After it's stripped, we topped the sugar cane stalk right below the green leaves. Then we cut down the stalks using this special tool attached to the tractor. Looks a lot like a saw blade, and it's a heck of a lot easier than bending over to cut each and every stalk. Then once it's cut, it's loaded onto a trailer, moved to the sugar cane press, ready to be processed. All that happened between Thursday and Friday, and we were pretty tuckered out at the end of the day. Then Saturday morning, as the sun rose and the rooster crowed, <laughs> oh, let's say uh, about seven o'clock, I think Steve likes this work camping stuff. I, I think he went up to the outhouse. He'll be right back. Shh, don't let him know. We fired up the old hit and miss motor, which runs the sugar cane press. She's a little bit temperamental this morning. I think she's a little bit cold, but Sooner or later, she fired up and started to purr. Feed the beast. This is the beast, the cane crusher. To start the process, Philip's standing on top of the sugar cane trailer, feeding the sugar cane. Feed the beast, four stalks at a time. Patty was receiving the sugar cane stalks after they were all squeezed of all their juices. And then she stacked it on the trailer, nice and neat, and then made sure everybody was doing their jobs. Philip was the jiggler. He made sure that the burlap sack over the holding tank did not get clogged. As the juices were crushed by the press, flowed down the chute, onto the burlap, and down into the holding tank. And this is the boss, Mr. Willard. He's in charge of the operation, the man with all the noodles. When the sugar cane cart was full, we took the crushed sugar cane stalks down to the edge of the field, dumped them out, Return the cart and continue the process. When the holding tank had about 50 gallons of juice, we transferred the juice over to the cast iron cooking pot. We lit the oven and started to heat the juices. It takes quite a while to get 50 gallons to boil, and then we're going to add more to it. So it takes quite a while to get it up to a boil. Then the paintbrush was adjusted to the correct position based on the ambient temperature. While the juices were heating up, we were watching and skimming off all the nasty stuff that the burlap filter missed. And we all took turns. We continued to feed the beast with sugarcane stalks until another 25 gallons was ready. Then we transferred it over to the cast iron pot. This continued until we had another 25 gallons. Then the last transfer, making 100 gallons of good old sugarcane juice. Now we wait and we watch until it boils. Then it cooks down. Then it rises up again. A ring was placed around the pot and then covered with burlap to act as a filter. And when it boils over, it runs through the filter and back into the pot. Then it starts what they call frogging, bubbling up, jumping around like a frog. It's almost ready. This is a commercial for pure sugar cane syrup made right here in Bloodstown, Florida at the Panhandle Pioneer Settlement. Made by work campers 
really good too. Now, if you feel good about that, go ahead and get you some. I'll leave a number right down below. Give them a call and they'll help you out with your purchase. Then the boss checked to see if it was ready. And when it hits that magical number, it's time. Then it was scooped out using these tin cans on a stick and poured into a holding tank for bottling. We made about 12 gallons of pure sugar cane syrup. Then all the bottles were filled one by one. And then we started our cleanup. So that's how work campers make syrup here at the Panhandle Pioneer Settlement. And until later, thanks for your time. Bye.